Cristiano Ronaldo proves the haters wrong. England fans are a bit of a mixed bunch. Mandzukic wants a Man United move. We've got a transfer roundup and today's Friday feels all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Frodick. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First off, and to Cristiano Ronaldo. And just when you thought he was on a bit of a downward curve, he pops up with another hat-trick. This time for Portugal, meaning he now has 98 international goals and is only 11 off the world record in men's football from Ali Dai, the Iranian forward. Can Cristiano Ronaldo get it? I'm pretty sure he can. It seems to be only a matter of time and a matter of when and not if. Of course, he has the rest of qualifying, including their next qualifying match and then the Euros next summer where Portugal are edging close to qualification where they'll be hoping to defend their title from back in 2016. I literally said this the other day that we're talking about how he was taken off by Maurizio Sarri, how Juventus scored both of their match winners in their last two games after he had been subbed and that you'd be wrong to write him off because he'd go and bag a hat-trick and look what happened. I'm not pretending to be some sort of mystical whiz, but you can never, ever write off Cristiano Ronaldo. But moving on and to the England reaction from last night, where a 7-0 victory over Montenegro secured Euro qualification, meaning they will be taking part next summer. The only problem is, while everything goes great on the pitch, England fans off the pitch are just an absolute mystery. Whether it's online or in the stadium, they just, I don't get it. First off, there was Joe Gomez who was booed when he came on by some of the England fans. So much so that Raheem Sterling had to go on social media and explain that England fans shouldn't be booing someone who did absolutely nothing. After it came out that Raheem Sterling really was the aggressor in this whole situation, the whole fight between them two, it really seems a bit odd that Gomez was the one to be booed. Along with this, if you go anywhere online, you'll see loads of people bashing England captain Harry Kane. Guy, captains the country and scores a hat-trick. That's definitely worth abuse, isn't it? Again, I don't really understand how people complain about the level of the opposition. If he's banging goals of the country, surely it's a good thing. I'm all for team rivalries, don't get me wrong. I'd hate when the teams around that my current team are beating them or beating them to titles or whatever. But surely when all the players come together, if they can all forget about it for the most part and play as a team to win 7-0, can't the fans just enjoy it? Probably not. What it didn't show though was when Harry Kane did score that hat-trick that he now has 30 international goals and has become joint sixth on the all-time goal scoring list. Of course, he still has 24 to beat Wayne Rooney's record, but the way he's going with three England hat-tricks so far, it looks like Kane will probably end up doing it. For some reason, that'll annoy loads of fans, but hey, that's fun. Anyway, moving on and to some transfer news. Where Mario Mandzukic has reportedly asked Juventus for permission to move to Manchester United already. This is because he wants to hit the ground running with his new side so he can train with them for the rest of December. And on January the 1st, when the transfer window opens, his registration will go through straight away and he'll be available to play. Now, this is a rather interesting deal because in the summer, a little Manchester United definitely needed him. They got rid of Romelu Lukaku, Alexis Sanchez also left on loan, and it looks as though Martial and Rashford weren't going to bring in the goals that United needed if they were to get back into the top four. Fast forward a few months though and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got a little bit more backing than he did before. Rashford seems to be finding the back of the net as he did at Wembley last night as well. Martial looks to be on better form. Dan James is working out a lot better than people expected in all honesty even though he was just 50 million. So do they actually need Mandzukic at the moment? In my opinion yes they do. There's two points to this. They could either have brought in another young player for the future, but his progression would have been stopped by the fact that Rashford and Martial are going to want to play all the games. This youngster, whoever they brought in, is also going to want to play games, or someone in the peak and prime of their career, also going to want to play a lot of football matches. With Mandzukic, even if he comes on the bench, that's still better than what he's getting at Juventus. He hasn't made a league appearance all season, and he's not even in the Champions League squad, so surely having someone on the bench who understands they aren't going to be playing all the time, and understands they're playing that more experienced role in the squad well it's going to suit them and it's going to suit Manchester United and to be honest the fact that he's not wanted at UV, I can kind of see this move happen. So next up we come to a quick roundup of the rest of the day's daily slash transfer news and Thierry Henry has been named the new coach of Montreal Impact in the MLS where he will coach Bojan a former teammate from Barcelona. Diego Costas had surgery and a neck injury which will keep him out for around three months. Juventus defender Merrick Demerel has had such a poor start to life at Juventus that apparently they're willing to sell him already after just a few months with both Manchester United and Arsenal interested in the Turkish defender. And lastly but not least, Joshua Kimmich, the German defender, has said that he's not totally against the idea of Pep Guardiola returning to Bayern Munich as manager. So lastly but not least, we come to this week's Friday Feels, where you guys leave your footballing predictions in the comment section down below, and we read out a few of the correct ones on Monday. Of course, this can be to do with anything with the football. It could be a scoreline, a goal scorer, a red card, a manager, someone being fired, anything like that. So there's not many overly 
interesting games this weekend. I'm just going to throw that out there. Some of the Euro qualifiers aren't great. So I'm going to go for a few goal scorers instead. I think Antoine Griezmann is going to get a hat-trick for France against Albania. I can see Harry Kane getting another hat-trick against Kosovo. And lastly but not least, Romelu Lukaku is going to bag three for Belgium, sticking with this hat-trick theme. So of course, let me know your Friday feels down below and your thoughts on the rest of today's daily news. Watch today, you can smash the like button and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, have a great weekend and I will see you guys later.